today with a reminder of the bonus. There's something Allah has given us, an additional bonus in this month that we should really take opportunity of, really take advantage of. Some of you may have heard me talk about this. I know the lecture is out on YouTube or whatever. I don't know how everything gets on YouTube. But I don't care. I'll talk about it again. Because Quran repeats itself. Why can't speakers repeat themselves? وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي The conversation happening up, up until now in these ayat was كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا You who believe, Muslim community, I'm talking to you. In the very next ayah, Allah doesn't talk to us. He's talking to His Prophet ﷺ. And He says, whenever my slaves ask you about me. Whenever my slaves ask you about me. Do you know the difference between when and if? There's a father whose son goes to the army. Does he say, if my son comes back, I'll be so happy? What does he say? When my son comes back, it'll be amazing. He never says if, because if is hopeless. If seems to suggest in my mind, maybe he's dead, or he's not making it. But his hope is alive, so he says, in anticipation and love, in joy, he says, when. Allah didn't say, if my slave asks you about me, he said, when my slave will ask you about me, because Allah is waiting in anticipation for you to ask about him. For me to ask about him. He didn't say if, he said when. When are you going to ask about me? When are you going to want to learn more about me? And who should you ask? You should ask the right teacher. So who do they come and ask? The Sahaba? Ibadi? Who do they go ask? The Prophet ﷺ. Now here's the logical flow of the conversation. I want you to appreciate these subtleties in the Qur'an. If they ask you about me, then tell them, then tell them I am near. That's the supposed ayah. Allah did not say, then tell them. فَقُلْ لَهُمْ لَمْ يَقُلْ لَمْ يَذْكُرْ هَذَا إِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ If my slaves ask you about me, you don't tell them I am near. You know what? I'm going to tell them myself. Then I am near. All you had to do to get close to Allah was ask about Him. Somebody says, I feel, God, I feel so distant from Allah, man. I feel so distant. Allah says, have you asked about me? You know when you miss someone, you ask about them. You know that, right? You miss Allah, you want to talk to Him, ask about Him, Allah guarantees. And by the way, don't be in any doubt, I am near. Inni qareeb. But the ayah said, if my slaves ask you about me, ibadi. Somebody might say, but I'm not a good slave. I'm not, I'm not that good. Maybe Allah is close to the people that are good, but I'm, I'm not one of those guys. How can He be close to me? Allah says, ujibu. I respond. And before I share this with you, you need to understand the comparison. How many of you work for a big corporation? If you work for a big corporation, maybe 500 employees, 1,000 employees, how often do you see your CEO? You don't. If maybe you saw your CEO, how long would it be? Oh, minutes are pretty heavy. It might be a couple of seconds maybe. You know, he'd walk by your cubicle and he'd say maybe one word, how's it going? And you'll be like the highlight of your life, you know, who said, how's it going to me? <laughs> that was amazing, bro. <laughs> and I was like, I'm all right. Yep, I responded. <laughs> <You know? laughs> when somebody is very high up and is responsible for a lot of people, then he doesn't respond to every one of the requests. He doesn't have time for you. You have to make time for him. You, he won't make time for you. I can't say, well, you know, I was listening to the radio and I heard Obama's speech. I didn't like what he said. You know what? I'm going to give him a call. <laughs> Yo, what you saying, man? Why you got to say it like that? Is that going to work? No, because he's a little higher up. Just a little bit, you know? I can't, I can't just have a direct conversation. Yeah, now, the lowest employee in your company is who? Don't say me. <laughs> <laughs> Like the guy, there's maybe the intern, maybe the secretary, maybe the janitor, the lowest status in your organization, the lowest status. And the CEO would be the highest. This, the word slave, is there any lower job description in existence? No. Slave means there's no one below you, bro. You know, there's no one below you. And Allah is Rabb, which means there's no one higher than Him. 
So now you're talking about communication between the highest possible and the lowest possible. In every other situation in the world, this conversation is impossible. And if it happens, it'll happen. If you get lucky, if you really get lucky, it might, might, might happen by chance. It might, might occur. But you're not going to be able to... And if it happens, it won't be regular. It's weird. Allah says, I am near to my slaves. First of all, you would think master should be distant from slaves. But this supremely high says, as low as you are as slaves, I am near you. And on top of that, you know, the, he can't respond to, uh, uh, someone up above doesn't respond to all your requests. Allah says, Ujibu, I immediately respond. I immediately respond. What comes first, request or response? Logically speaking, what comes first? Allah didn't even mention the request, that is إِذَا دَعَانِي That's the request portion of the ayah, we haven't even translated that yet. Allah says, I'm so anxious to respond, I'll mention my response first, I'll mention the request later. SubhanAllah. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِي is first, إِذَا دَعَانِ is later, it's incredible. The actual sequence is إِذَا دَعَانِي أُجِيبُ When he calls me, I answer. He says, no, I answer when he calls. He mentions his enthusiasm. First we learn he's in wait, he's waiting for us to ask about him. Then he says, I will call, I will respond immediately. By the way, there are two, uh, two words for answering. There's astajibu and ujibu. Astajibu means, I will try to answer, or I will answer over time. Two meanings. I will try to answer, and I will answer over time. Also means I want to answer. Just because somebody wants to answer, does that mean they actually answer? No. But if you say ujibu, it means I immediately answer. People that are important, you have to leave them voicemails and they will maybe call you back in two years. Allah says, you don't have to leave me a voicemail. I'll respond immediately. But the thing is, and I'll give you another example to help you understand this better, I had to take my daughter to a specialist. One of my daughters, she needed to see a specialist. And these specialists, they're very rare. You know, every city has two or three, maybe. And you go to them and they have a long waiting list. And they give you an appointment three months later. And it's not up to you what day. They say there's an opening, you want it or no? Take it or leave it. So you take it. And if you're 10 minutes late, what are they gonna do? Another four months, five months, go. I don't have time for you. When you have to meet with someone important, your schedule doesn't matter, their schedule matters. Isn't that logical? Doesn't that make sense? Allah says, I respond to the call of the caller, إِذَا da'an, Whenever he calls me. Call me whenever you want middle of the day, middle of the night, whenever it's convenient for you, I the Most High will make immediate time for you the Most Low. Isn't that something? <laughs> the power of dua. Allah is inviting you and me to make dua whenever. Whenever. Ida da'an. But there's more. I want to share a couple more things with you. He says, da'wa, da'wata. What is this called in, in Arabic? Some of you, even if you don't know Arbi, you know this word. What is it? Dua. He didn't say ujibu dua ad da'i. He said ujibu da'wa ad da'i. Da'wa with the stam or buta at the end. I know I'm getting Arabic a little bit, but I'll, I'll simplify it in a sec. The stam or buta actually is called mastar marra. What this means in the English language is something that happens at a single moment. Allah is saying, I'm not talking about me responding to someone who makes dua all the time, he prays to me all the time. Even if there's a guy who's never prayed to me and he decided one time to turn to me sincerely. One time he made dua to me. That guy, I'm talking about that guy, da'wata, a single call. And then he said, ad-da'i, I respond to the call of the caller. Let me tell you this, a caller could be anybody, isn't it? A caller could be anyone. Does a caller have to be a righteous person to be a caller? No, the Arabic word caller captures anybody. Allah didn't say you have to be this righteous, your beard has to be this long, you must have prayed this many prayers, you must have finished hajj, you must have done this and this and this, and you must be pur purified of all these sins before you get to call me. He says, so long as you're a caller, and even if you call once, I'll respond. How many calls does he get? Can you imagine? Now when you get a lot of calls, is it easy for you to, for you and me, to forget who was I talking to? I have a horrible memory, I mean I mix up my kids' names. I have a terrible memory. Brother comes up to me and says, Brother I met you last year at the convention. 
I was like, okay. <laughs> I just, I don't remember. I'm sorry. I start my conversation with an apology. I'm sorry, I don't remember. You know, you look familiar though, like kind of Muslim. <laughs> you know, like, that's all I can say. I can't say much more. Allah did not say, and by the way, when somebody is anonymous, you call them a caller. When somebody is known and recognized, you call them the caller. Allah didn't say, Ujibu da'wata da'in. He said, Ujibu da'wata da'i. I respond to the call of the caller. Meaning, he's not just anyone to me. He is not an A, he is a the. He is particular to me. He's unique to me. He's an individual to me. So you and I have a direct, no shared access with Allah in which He recognizes every one of our presences and every single one of our du'as because du'a could have been all du'a but da'wah is every single one of them with the tamar butatiyah da'wah tadda'i whenever you call this is Allah's invitation this is the passage about Ramadan, right? when is this invitation most open? Ramadan you really want to get your act together with du'a? when do you get that jump started, super jump started? Ramadan. He is near. He's opened that invitation. Let me conclude with this. This ayah. Fayyastajibuli. <laughs> then they should try to respond to me. He said, I respond over time or immediately? What did he, which one did he say? You remember? I respond immediately. Allah didn't say, Well, you should respond immediately too to me. He said, no, then they should at least try to respond to me. They should at least want to respond to me. Allah says, I'm not expecting too much from you. At least give me a sincere effort. Don't give me ijaba, give me istijaba. He changed, he switched the verb. See, that's why Arabic is important, guys. You read the English translation of the ayah, you probably 90% of what I shared with you today is not there. And when you, when you make that intention, I guarantee you Allah will open doors for you you never imagined. I guarantee it. Because Allah guarantees it. So He says, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُولِ Try to respond to me. وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي And they should believe in me. Allah mentioned believing in Him at the end because when people pray to Allah, Ya Allah, get me a raise. Ya Allah, let me marry that girl. Let the family say yes. I know her father hates me, but please, somehow, <laughs> put something in his heart. Put something in his heart. And the girls make a dua, Ya Allah, not that guy. Please, not that guy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, you know. You're making dua, and sometimes you don't see the results of your dua. Sometimes you don't, you don't see the results immediately. And then you start thinking, well, God said He's going to respond immediately, where's my raise? <laughs> ya Allah, by the time I reach my car today, my 1978 <laughs> Cutlass Sierra in the parking lot, let it be a BMW M5. <laughs> 2012. <laughs> Navigation, spinner rims would be nice. Amin. <laughs> And you get to the parking lot, you're like, what's up, God? It's Ramadan and everything. Nothing working. No, 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 no. Allah says, the prayers are answered not on your schedule. Allah will respond, but He will give you what's best for you. You don't even know what's best for yourself. Allah knows what's better for you. He'll respond though, in His way. In, and His way is way better than your way, trust me. So that requires you to believe Him, that His way is better. His way of responding is better. I'll give you a small example of that. A mother is afraid that her baby is going to die. A mother is afraid. Mother, mother of Musa is afraid her baby is going to die. Allah says, breastfeed her. Breastfeed the child. Ayah comes, just feed the child. You might think, my ba soldiers are coming to kill. If they hear a baby make a single noise, they're going to kill a baby. You're telling me to feed the child? No, she trusts Allah and she starts feeding the child. And guess what? When a child is being fed, does the child make noise or no? So they don't hear the child. No, if she tries to hide the child, put a blanket over him, whatever, is he gonna, a little bit of a eh, and it's over. Allah gave her the best thing she could have had at that very moment, feed your child. And if you really get scared, here's what you do, put him in the river. If you're afraid, put him in the river. Now the thing is, putting him in the river was the best thing that mother ever did because she believed in Allah. Because you know why? That river got him to a palace. And when he got to the palace, he was already, Allah had put in the heart of that baby that he will only drink that flavor of milk. So no matter how many wet nurses you bring him, he will not accept. 
How would a baby know the difference between this and milk and that milk? Well, Allah installed that software way, way back when she was at the house, when she fed him the first time. So he's used to that flavor, that's it. He can't have anything else. So he doesn't have to recognize, he's not even old enough to recognize his mother. But he's old enough, his heart is mature enough to recognize that milk. And that's how she gets the job at that house. And her baby's safe. Her baby's gonna be safe there, safer than anywhere else. Inside the palace. Who's gonna go door to door inside the palace? SubhanAllah. Allah has His way. Allah has His way. You and I have, we think our way. Allah should do it our way. No, no, no. Allah's way is way better. If Allah's way happened and the soldiers didn't catch the baby that day, is it possible to catch him the next day or the day after that or the day after that? It's possible. What Allah set up for her was terrifying in the beginning, but it saved her and her child's grief. Allah had bigger plans. We have to, that takes trust. Well, you mean be. This is the last part that I'd like to share with you. Allah said, fasting was given so you can get what? Taqwa. Ramadan was given so you can be what? Grateful. Dua is given so you can get straight. You can be heading in the right direction. You can be guided. Allah is saying there's a direct connection between talking to Him, asking for, for things, and being guided. That is why the surah of guidance, the surah of Fatiha, how do we ask for guidance? In a dua, ihdina. We're learning guidance and dua are one and the same. They're fused together, they're inseparable entities. And you and I, if we're not making a lot of dua, then I can guarantee you, we do not have a lot of guidance. Allah says, they should believe in me, they should ask me, they should try to respond to me, so that they can be set straight. You don't make dua and you're gonna have problems. You're gonna have problems. And don't, don't be like one of those obnoxious du'a people. You know what an obnoxious du'a per person is? You know, bro, I had, an, I had a midterm, and I, was, I made like so much du'a, and I still failed. That's why I don't pray. <laughs> the, this is, du'a is not Amazon.com. I placed the order, and I said expedited shipping, and it didn't show up, I don't give them orders anymore. You're, you're not Allah's customer. You don't place orders with Allah. You know the people who talk like that were the followers of Musa. Udu'u lana rabbak, yukhrij lana. Call your, make dua to Allah, give us something. Come on, hook us up. The, fo the followers of Fir'aun talk like that. Udu'u lana rabbak, call your, call your master, make these, these nine signs stop. Make them stop. You think you're entitled to get Allah to do what you want to do? Then you sound like the misguided followers of Fir'aun or the misguided, you know, excuse of followers of Musa salam. That's what you've become. Come on, don't have an attitude when you make dua to Allah. Understand, He's the highest, you are the lowest. Maybe you forgot that. Just because He made Himself available, you think you just, you lose your place. You start thinking, man, I made dua and nothing happened. Come on. You can't have that attitude. You can't. And a lot of people lose faith because their du'as are not answered. So, one minute and I'm done inshallah. A lot of people lose faith because their du'as are not answered. We have to be the people, the more we make du'a, the more our iman increases. May Allah Azza wa Jal make the month of Ramadan a month of taqwa for us, a month of gratitude for us, and a month of being set guided for all of us. Barakallahu feekum, barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim, wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. One last announcement for all of you inshaAllah ta'ala, it's a request. Some of you know, a lot of you don't. If, I, if you can remember this website and visit it and share it with family and friends, amazedbythequr'an.com amazed by the Quran.com. It's the first conference that I and my colleagues have tried to put together. It's, it's uh, gonna be a yearly event myself, Sheikh Abdul Nasir and Imam Suhaib Webb from Boston, he's flying in from Boston. The three of us are gonna have a one day program in Dallas, at, it's actually fairly close to the airport, and it's on June the 30th. It's a family event, and we're expecting over a thousand people to attend, inshallah ta'ala, maybe even about approximately 2,000. So I'd like as many of you to be a part of that. Youth groups here should take a bus out there. Families should go, inshallah, it should be a great event for the family too. Babysitting's available, you can sign up for that online also. What's the website? Amazedbythequr'an.com. Thank you so much for listening. Barakallahu wa barakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar! I want to miss my Allahu Akbar.